Hello and welcome to Lilybrook. Now as I've got a lot more new bodies on the channel, I thought I'd show you around my own course. Now the first hole's rather tight, so I'm quite happy to hit a three wood down here. Now there's two issues today. Firstly I woke up with a very stiff, very sore neck, which alters my turn and alters the swing path, so there's going to be some ugly golf today. And the second thing is we've just had a very large amateur tournament and the greens have been shaved and rolled and there's going to be some seriously bad putting today. The second hole is a little dog leg to the left. It's only small. So I always try and hit just my standard straight shot. But this one's a little tight. I looked up all I could see was sunshine. Yeah, good contact. And here's the first bad swing caused by the injury. Over the top and straight into the tree in front of me. So the course gives me a second chance at trying to hit the green. The third is a long par three, with two bunkers down the right. My job is to get the ball out the left and bounce it in. All I've done is put it full toss into the bunker. This is a tough hole, and I don't get a shot on it, so a mistake like that off the tee it's quite expensive. First time out with the driver and I need to get left of the arrow. Well it started left but with that injury I'm slicing it. Yeah and now we get a premature visit to the fifth hole. <laughs> Well, now we're actually back on the fourth. You can see the green. And that's a semi knife with the sand wedge. So, do single figure golfers play good golf all the time? Um, no. Yay, a triple. <laughs> well, the out of focus fifth is a dog leg left and in the trees on the left is absolutely dead so I'm happy to hit a straight shot now the green you're absolutely dead if you miss it right if I'm close enough I go down the green if not I'll quite happily miss it left now this green is a bit of a nightmare at the best of times but now it's rolled and shaved it's even worse The sixth also has a drainage ditch across, just like the second, which puts a three wood in your hand, which is fine until you miss hit it slightly. Then you find yourself a long way back. But the green is quite large and it's easier to hit. Well, if you're aiming the right way, it's easier to hit. Where the flag is today, way up at the back of the green, it's quite awkward. It's very difficult to read. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, it stayed out there. It certainly stayed out there. Number seven 
plays about half a club uphill and half a club into the wind. That's why I'm taking a five iron here. Well, that was a bit low on the face, so I suspect it's not going to have stopped, and it didn't. Now, this is downhill, and this should be very quick. And... Yeah, I didn't quite get it there. Well, eight is our only par five, and it's up the hill, and it plays considerably longer than four nine seven. Especially as there's a little dog leg in it and two large trees. Now I'm quite happy being behind this one because this is a shot I can hit to drill the three wood underneath it. And good old shot tracer made a hash of it. Found a shot I can hit. And it's always nice to have a little birdie chance. But of course, we're getting rather confused by the pace of the greens and how much they're borrowing. I think it's because they've rolled them. Didn't come down. You would expect that to turn, wouldn't you? Number nine is 467 from the competition tee. And left is dead. So you have to take the left side out of play. And I'm really quite happy hitting it down the right. It's in the fairway anyway. <laughs> and if you're long enough, you can see the green. But here again, is that horrible fault caused Almost. by a stiff and painful neck. So the easy par has just gone out the window. Ten is rather short, and I don't feel any particular need to get right up next to the green. So I'm always happy hitting a three wood up here, and then I got a full wedge in. The green itself is three tiered, and you do want to get on the correct tier, but you don't ever want to go past this flag. Going past and putting back is a big no no. Yeah, I didn't know whether the shoulder of the bunker would have any influence on that one. 11 is our shortest par 3, and the flag is in the worst position for me, front left. I don't know why, but I just really don't like it there. It's horrible being stiff. The only thing I can say that's good about that shot is it's still above ground. But not having played to this front one very often, I find the read on this putt very difficult. Boy, did that one steam away. Well, I did thump it. Twelve is our big dog leg to the right. Now, the actual drive isn't very hard. In fact, I only need three wood. That gives me a view up the hill. Ooh, that's going to be a long way in. And if I'd hit a decent three wood, I'd certainly be 20 yards closer. I can't reach this green. It is a long way up there. And usually you're playing off an upslope, which makes it even more awkward. Now the green slopes heavily halfway for ladies. from back to front. And there's a step in it. If you put the flag down here where my ball is, and my ball up by the flag... A putt down the hill does not stop till it reaches the fringe. I was just scared of it and that. <laughs> so even if you get on in two, you're likely to make a bogey. Another short par four. Now you really have to get left of centre, because if you don't, then the ball will run away on the slope. Stop!
Well, that little half shot with a 9-iron is too long. The green's a bit of a bowl, and you can use the slopes around the green to get it back into the middle. But not if you go too far. This hole can be really easy. And it also can be really difficult. Nice four. Well, about 40 yards beyond the marker post, there's a flat area. It's about the size of a tennis court, and I always try and play for it. But when you go left like that, it's only going to end in one place. And that's down this bank. Fortunately, I've played it often enough to know what to do. Nice. Good change. Fifteen is another hard par four. The fairway is offset to the left, so I aim for a fade. The trees down the right are definitely a no-no. And that was a very bad case of the body stopping and the hand wrapping over. So we need another ball because we're three off the tee. Now if you do hit this fairway, as you can see, you land on an upslope and it stops pretty quickly. So with no run out, this hole plays a lot longer than its yardage. Well that stinks too, but it is a little better. Green's up there on a shelf, you have to aim right. And at least that one's a decent shot. But this 15th green is very fast and very slopey. In fact, I've putted from the back to a front left flag off the green and into the bunker. Way out there. Oh, it's too fast. Yeah, there's quite a bit of speed in this one. This is a big number. A very big number. At 16 we drive over that ridge over the top of my golf bag. Well, we try and drive over the ridge over the top of the golf bag. And then the ball goes down into a deep hollow and the camera's gone on strike again. So just a hybrid into the hollow and it's taken me two shots to get to where I normally drive to. Now up this hill it's quite a long way and the mistake I see quite often is people not taking enough club to actually get up there. Once you get up there, the green's a bit of a bowl, and putting isn't that difficult. Oh, I mean, Oggy did it to me last week. Oh, <laughs> he says you're on a score or something. Well, I birded the 11th. Yeah. He had a good tee shot on 12, and he said, Do you know you're only one over par? <laughs> right, thank you. 17 is another long par 3. We've got water on the right, there's two bunkers on the left. So the general idea is to play a little short and use the slope to get the ball on the green. But I didn't hit that one well enough. But never say never when it comes to a par. Now the last hole is the 18th. And we go all the way downhill back to the clubhouse. Thanks for watching. Cheerio. Oh, far and is always nice, isn't it?
You all right? <laughs> well, then, I'm on camera. I don't care. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.